morning, Good Shepherds and friends. Welcome to Good Shepherd Church School. I would like to also tell you that there are some church school books that are still available if you, you would like to have one. We thank you for your presence here today, whether you're home or riding around. We just thank you for being here today. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we come once again this morning, Lord, just to say thank you now for the opportunity to study your word, open our hearts and our minds, that we might be receptive of your word, Heavenly Father, and that we may be put it into practice, what we learn today, and that it will be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, we pray and claim victory. Amen. Our church school scripture is 2 Timothy 2.15, which says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Our mission here at Good Shepherd is to win souls through witnessing, teaching, making disciples, and ministering to the community. And our theme for 2020 is, Gone from good to great, exalting the Savior. All of this month, basically, we have been in there, the book of Proverbs. And I have to tell you that you're going to find some repetition all over the book of Proverbs. I don't know whether Proverbs is trying to tell us, get our minds fixed on what we need to do and how we need to do it. But today, our subject for today is wisdom's rewards. And I want you to remember that word, rewards. Our unifying topic today is the gift of wisdom, and I want you to remember that word gifts. Our background lesson today comes from Job, the first chapter, verse 42. Our lesson passages today come from Proverbs, the eighth chapter, verses 8 through 14, verses 17 through 21. Our main thought today which is in our lesson today, is Proverbs, the 8th chapter, verses 10 and 11. And it says, Remember my instructions, and not silver, and knowledge, rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may, we may desire are not to be compared to it. And in our background today, we'll find that wisdom is, is first personified as being pictured as having a human personality. In Proverbs 3, verses 15 through 18, and chapters 8 and 9, picks up on this fonification, I mean personification in wisdom. It pictures wisdom as a woman. A woman who speaks, witness her experience before all humanity and offers wealth and prosperity to all who finds her wisdom. Lady Wisdom help us to better understand God by taking one of his attributes and giving it personality and consciousness. Personified is Jesus Christ. He is the embodiment of wisdom. To receive wisdom, we must pursue it and make it a priority in our lives. We are to choose wisdom over earthly riches. If we do so, wisdom will see to it that the worldly riches will be given unto us. Ah, oh, what a great joy. To know that with wisdom, you can get wisdom and riches aside one another. This is what happened to Solomon. Solomon, in a dream one night, the Lord asked him, so what do you want, Solomon? And Solomon said he wanted wisdom in order that he might be able to lead Israel in the right direction. And God gave Solomon wisdom. And he had wisdom in everything that he did. 
Every place that he'd go, every, he conquered those things as long as he was with wisdom. But what happened? Solomon let the devil get in. And when the devil got in, he changed Solomon's mind. And Israel, Israel went down, Solomon, everything Solomon did after that was wrong. He lost everything that he had because he did not listen to wisdom. And chapter 8 provides background for, of Christ, for Christians, un, understanding of Christ as the wisdom and the word of God. This chapter regards as one of the most difficult and insightful chapters in the book. It encourages the, the reader to choose wisely. Wisdom is Christ. And in him all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge lie. The word of God is true wisdom. Without wisdom, the word of God would be of no value and ineffective. Before God created the mountain, the sea, the skies, wisdom was present. Believe it or not, wisdom works hand in hand with God in creating the world. Human beings was made by God's wisdom. And it is an absolutely beautiful creation. Amen to that. Even as wisdom can be fleeing sometime, this chapter teaches us that wisdom can be found even though you think you may have lost wisdom or how to do certain things. You can pray back, pray to God and God will give you your wisdom. We often sometimes encounter God and wisdom through other people we meet. It is important to make sure we use the godly, wise people that God puts in our path. There are some time we, the goal, we used to say something like, there are some people that have mother wisdom. That's wisdom that comes from God that you'll be able to be able to direct things, be able to do things that is right and pleasing unto God. We must pursue wisdom, for wisdom is faultless. Many of the Proverbs address to young men and women, warning them against the many pitfalls in life. If you apply, apply the practical message of God's wisdom, our life will be rich. If you forsake them and allow your own wisdom and understanding, you will be on the path of destruction. Wisdom here is a, a, affirming that her teaching is honorable and trustworthy. Verse 13 calls us back to the first chapter of Proverbs saying, those who fear the Lord hates evil. We use the words called cry, speak, lips, mouth, and utter. In the open verses of Proverbs, attest to the quality and the character of wisdom teaching and standing in sharp contrast to the speech of the loose woman found in chapter 5. Wisdom declare that she is always right. Every word she speaks is clear, undoctorated, and pure. She is completely faultless and flawless in her words. Wisdom is perfect. Wisdom followers are discerning and knowledgeable, and they clearly recognize truth. She begs her audience to hear what she has to say because her knowledge is most valuable to be desired more than silver and gold. Wisdom speaks lie to all people and pleads with, pleads with them to choose her over all worldly treasures. Because you don't know, worldly treasures, they go. And when they're gone, you don't have anything else to fall back on, but if you got wisdom, she'll teach you how to use the worldly treasures that you do have. Those who walk wisely 
are the reference of wisdom. All of wisdom's followers attest to that she has led them in the path of abundant life. Wisdom says silver and gold are nothing compared to her wealth and value. She surpassed all of them. The main reasons we ought to choose wisdom over silver and gold is because wisdom leads us to fear the Lord and to hate evil. A person that chooses wisdom must be willing to turn away from all evil. Wisdom and evil are not related in any way. A person who chooses wisdom must be, must be willing to turn away from all evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's in chapter 1 and 7. To fear the Lord means to respect Him and obey His commandments. Any wise person can identify by their positive qualities as well as by the absence of negative traits. Quality and negative traits. Have you ever been around some people sometime and it doesn't matter what you say or what you do or even how you do it, they always have some negative comments. No matter what. They can, you can bring something up good and they have something negative to say about it. You want to stay away from those type of people with negative traits. Wisdom desires and despise and hate pride and arrogance. Pride. self ex exportations doing what gives you joy and happiness and when we do that when we are selfish and when we think about nobody but ourselves that is going to be a downfall for us in the long run the end does not justify the means perverted speech to use our words to inflict harm and create pain for ourselves and for others. If we are to take hold of wisdom, then we must let go and develop a hatred of wicked behavior, arrogance, and perverted speech. Wisdom is understanding and strength. Understanding is the skill of being able to see through to the heart of the matter. Strength gives a person the ability to withstand pressure in the midst of difficulties and adversaries. Knowledge comes through the experience knowing that, a, that the person of wisdom namely is Jesus Christ. The one who has man, material possessions, is commanding us, the one that who has been material possessions or is commanding to use it to take care for the poor and the vulnerable. Find that in Deuteronomy 15th chapter 7 through the 8th verse. Wisdom has a promise. Wisdom is righteous and rich. As a faithful companion, wisdom is devoted. She is dependable in all that you can say. Or always trust her to be by your side. Anyone that has wisdom has a friend. Also will find that she is committed and loyal at all times. She gives riches and honor, wealth and righteousness to those who choose her as a friend. Riches refer to tangible earthly blessings. An honest person gains respect. A person who chooses wisdom possesses wealth because she passes her wealth to those who she loves. 
as she continually filled their storehouses. Those who choose wisdom over worldly goods receive the worldly treasure along with wisdom. Isn't that a great thing? That you can receive the worldly treasures along with wisdom as long as you keep your mind on wisdom. Wisdom, I want you to listen at this. Wisdom knows exactly how to bless you and how much you are able to handle without becoming too, too prideful. There have been occasions when God bless people, they get the big head. They think they know everything. You can't say anything to them and they think that God came to their house and their house only, but that is not wisdom. That is the devil that's trying to come in and get you to not depend and lean on wisdom. God specializes in Intimate knowledge of each of his children. God is the author of it. Christ is the embodiment of wisdom. To receive wisdom, we must pursue it and make it a priority in our lives. We are to choose wisdom over earthly riches. If we do so, wisdom will be you will see it, the worldly riches will be given to you as well. What a great joy it is to know that you can have wisdom as well as riches. Consider this, consider this, that there is no substitute for or shortcut to divine wisdom. The path of wisdom is set and it is its requirement must be met, but it is his, its rewards are lavished. Hear what wisdom has to say. God desires for his people is for us to walk in wisdom. We must listen when wisdom calls out to us and choose the wise path of life. We must learn how to live it. We must choose wisdom over everything else in life. The source of all wisdom is Jesus Christ. We must seek Christ first, and then everything else will be added unto us. Share it. We must share what we learn to others. Wisdom first calls us to choose Christ. Wisdom calls again for us to choose Jesus over riches. We are making the best decision when we commit to him. Jesus said we must choose God or mammon. We cannot choose both. If we choose God and his righteousness, all else will be added to us. And Matthew 6 and 33 tell us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. In closing, adults and young adults may be in need of a course correction. Some may have been led in life to believe that and understand that the material wealth was to be pursued at all costs. But that's not wisdom. I am here to tell you today that wisdom is there to give you protection, to give you understanding, to get put the situation in front of you that you may be able to deal with it. Wisdom corrects you, give you responsibilities. I tell you today that if we just take wisdom and not our own thinking and lean and depend on God, his wisdom, and the Holy Spirit, which wisdom is, 
one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ himself left back here for us. There is nothing that we cannot do that is good and righteous to God. Share what God have given you. Share what you have been taught that others may be able to come to Christ. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for a study of your word this morning, Lord. Pray your blessings upon it now, Lord. Guide us now and lead us, Heavenly Father. We pray for good shepherd at large, Heavenly Father, continue to bless us. And let us be a light in the community that men and women may be able to see us, but when they see us, they can see you in us. Bless our going out and our coming in. Give us that going on determination when things do get tough and rough in our life, that we'll just look to you to often finish our faith, knowing that through you all things are possible. In Jesus' name we pray and claim victory. Amen.